Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Well, since you sold this gentleman 34 feet of pipe and only delivered 28 feet, it would appear that you owe him six feet of pipe. Would you rather have the pipe or the money? I'd rather have the money, Your Honor. Then you will reimburse him for the cost of six feet of pipe. Bailiff, may I see you a moment? Not here yet. Good, then we'll win by default. I don't want it that way. What the facts to prove us right and him wrong? Money's secondary. Justice is primary. Even though it means missing a whole day's work? Honey, when you're dealing with justice... Okay, 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 okay. Here he is. <laughs> Sit down, May. Well, you just can't tell about people. You seem like such a nice man. Yeah, so was Jack the Ripper until he started ripping. <laughs> Order, please. Next case. Petrie versus Wiley. Are the principals here? Yes, Your Honor. Step forward, please. Your Honor, I, uh, the plaintiff, Robert Petrie, have not retained counsel. Here. Speak up, please. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, I, Robert Petrie, the plaintiff, have not retained counsel, and I will represent myself in this action, if it please the court. The court is very pleased. <laughs> we are pleased since only the defendant is allowed the use of an attorney in this court. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I thought I had to make that announcement. It wasn't necessary, but thank you anyway. Well, you're welcome. Do you want a, a strike? What, a, that, what I said? Consider it, <laughs> Consider it struck. <laughs> Gentlemen, it would be very prudent if we began after the luncheon recess. It's very prudent, Your Honor. <laughs> Court is adjourned until 2 o'clock. All rise. It's a nice judge. <laughs> Rob, I still think you should have let Marvin handle this for us out of court. Will you stop worrying? I got all the facts right in here, but a few little tricks. <laughs> Small claim court, County Westchester, is now in session. Judge Nathaniel Taylor presiding. Be seated. Uh, Petrie versus Wiley. Mr. Petrie, you are the plaintiff? Emphatically, Your Honor. Then will you present your case to the court, please, and keeping in mind that we have a very busy calendar. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm fully aware of your busy calendar, and I will attempt at all times to be as brief, concise, and succinct as I possibly can. And now I would like to give my opening statement, if it so please the court. It does not please the court. <laughs> we do not make opening statements in this court. I have read your complaint. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Your Honor. May I finish my statement? Oh, uh, yeah, proceed. Uh, go ahead, sir. <laughs> will you please tell the court your side of the story? Thank you, Your Honor. Well, there are, are two, uh, two different things involved in this case. First of all, a small amount of money, $80 to be exact, and a very large amount of principle, I think, which is that uh, it's a citizen's responsibility to himself and to his community to seek justice where injustice has been done. Mr. Petri, am I wrong, or did you just sneak in part of your opening statement? <laughs> Uh, just the last uh, two sentences, Your Honor. I, I left out a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Do you, you want to strike? Uh, there was. It struck. <laughs> it got two strikes against me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, uh, the co uh, plaintiff, Mrs. Petrie, and I first became involved with Mr. Wiley here about two months ago. Unknown to me, my wife had made a certain purchase from uh, Mr. Wiley, which uh, will here and after be referred to as Exhibits A through D. Mr. Petrie, <laughs> what your wife bought was four pillows, correct? Well, uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, Exhibits A, B, C, and D. Well, since we're all agreed they're pillows, for clarity's sake, just refer to them as pillows. 
and leave all that aid through D stuff to Perry Mason, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor, I've never, uh, I've never spoken in court before. I understand, Mr. Petrie. Just relax and tell the story. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Well, as I said, my wife uh, purchased these four uh, pillows from uh, Mr. Wiley a couple months ago. At the time, she, she uh, had no reason for believing there was anything wrong with them until the night of the day of the uh, purchase of the uh, pillows in, in the question. Oh, honey, these feel great. Well, I certainly hope so, darling. Man guaranteed me they were absolutely perfect for people who like to scrunch up their pillows. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, let you know as soon as I get it all scrunched up here. Swell? Oh, the greatest. Hey, boy, aren't they good? Oh, honey, you are a great pillow buyer. Right? Nine. No kiss? I just got it all scrunched up right. <laughs> Have to re scrunch it, that's all. Night. Night. Honey? You smell anything? Yes, I do, Rob. What is it? Very peculiar. What in the, the world? The pillows! It is. What in the world is that smell? Chickens. <laughs> no, duck down. Huh? Rob, the man said that these were the finest eider down pillows made. Eider down? Yes, it's the down. From Eider Ducks. Look, see, it says so right here on the label. Eider Down. Yeah. They're supposed to be the best thing in the world for sleeping. Oh, they are. Well, how about a piece of Limburger cheese? <laughs> well, we've had Eider Down pillows before. They never smell like this. Yeah. Well, the duck who got rid of these to make a pillow must be the happiest duck in the world. Those <laughs> chickens. Could be chickens. I guess they smell alike. Well, they hang around together. <laughs> well, just have to return them. Where are the old pillows? I sent them out to be cleaned. Honey, didn't you smell those before you bought them? Well, Rob, would you really expect me to? No, I guess, I guess not. Well, this is going to be some great night. Oh, darling, look, it's not that horrible. They say it's good for you to sleep without a pillow. Sure it is, if you sleep on your back. <laughs> sleeps on her back, as you know. I mean, why I said it. You see, the night wasn't too bad for her, but I woke up the next morning, I had a stiff neck. Mr. Petrie, this information is not relevant to your complaint. Well, Your Honor, I, I feel that these factors are all contributory in my dissatisfaction with Mr. Wiley here. Mr. Wiley, you've heard Mr. Petrie's story. Yes, Your Honor, about uh, 20 times. Well, Your Honor, I'm not finished. Uh, sit down, please, Mr. Petrie. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Wiley, uh, do you have any comment on Mr. Petrie's story thus far? Yes, Your Honor. I can only say that I did sell the Petrie four pillows. Uh, what happened after they went to sleep, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there when they, when they went to bed, and I certainly don't go around peeking through windows. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, uh, Mrs. Petrie called and said uh, uh, the pillows smelled from chickens. Well, for all I know, they might have been eating cold chicken legs in bed. I don't eat in bed. Well, uh, maybe a banana once in a while. <laughs> Mr. Petrie, uh, what was Mr. Wiley's response when you told him the pillow smelled of chicken? Well, Your Honor, rather than give hearsay evidence, I'd like to call my first witness to the stand. In the small claims court, we do not have a witness stand. Oh, uh, that's right. I'm, uh, well, in that case, I'd like to call my first witness to stand. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, co-plaintiff and my wife, Mrs. Laura Petrie. 
Uh, where where do I go? Uh, do I do mine from here? Or come in and do it. <laughs> Very well. Proceed. And remember, Mrs. Petrie, you are under oath. Yes, I, I understand that, sure. Your Honor. Uh, be seated. Uh, be seated. Be seated. Be seated. <laughs> Uh, would you uh, state your name and address, please? Well, Rob, they... He's right, Mrs. Petrie. We need it for the court record. Oh, uh, it's uh, Mrs. Laura Petrie, 148 Bonnie Meadow Road, New Rochelle, New York. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Petrie, at the time of the aforementioned purchase, did you live at that address with the cold plaintiff? <laughs> uh, Am I, am I out of order, Your Honor? It's not your fault, Mr. Petrie. It's television. You think you're a lawyer. I think I'm a doctor. <laughs> Please proceed. <laughs> well, <clears throat> now, Mrs. Petrie, the defendant has already admitted that you telephoned him complaining about the chicken-smelling pillows. Now, would you now, to the best of your recollection, and in your own words, Tell us what transpired and ensued during that telephone call, keeping in mind at all times that you are under oath. <laughs> Just tell what happened on the phone. Oh. Uh, well, uh, the following morning, I called Mr. Wiley and told him that the uh, pillows smelled like chickens. And... Uh, he said that that was impossible, but, th but then I said that both our noses couldn't be wrong and that we wanted to exchange the pillows. What did he say? Well, he said that uh, he would come over that evening and uh, see what the trouble was. Then Mr. Wiley was being very cooperative. Your Honor, I object. <laughs> you what? Well, I'm, I'm begging your pardon, Your Honor. I mean, isn't that leading the witness? <laughs> yes. Tell it your own way, Mrs. Petrie. Well, um, that evening sometime after dinner, Mr. Wiley arrived at our house. <clears throat> and, uh... Now, what seems to be the trouble, folks? Uh, well, it's what I told you on the phone. I'll, I'll go get them. <laughs> Darn this thing. They smell like chickens. Chickens? Well, I find that hard to believe, Mr. Petrie. Yeah, you'll see. Here we go. Uh -huh. Too bad, too. They were good pillows. Real scrunchers. Mm. <laughs> Chickens, right? No. Oh, well, what is it you smell? Nothing. You don't smell anything? No, not a thing. Here, let me try that. Yeah, maybe you didn't smell it correctly. Yeah. Have to use your nose and breathe in. <laughs> I don't smell a thing. Well, I don't understand that at all. Well, have you got a cold or hay fever or something? Oh, sir. Uh, it could be your imagination. Or, uh, that's silly. How can both of us imagine the same thing? Hmm. I don't understand that. Tell you what, I'll go out and get my wife and let her take a sniff. Your wife? She's waiting out in the car. Meg? Bob, this is not my imagination. Now how can he not smell that? I don't know. Unless he doesn't want to smell it. You think he's trying to jip us? Could be. Hello, <laughs> oh, Mr. and Mrs. Petrie. Uh, this is my wife, Meg. Hello. How do you do, Miss Wiley? Uh, ple pleased to meet you. It's a nice place you got here. Well, thank you. Uh, can I get you something? A cup of coffee? Uh, no, uh, just let her smell the pillows and then we have to go. Oh, here you are, Miss Wiley. I don't smell no chicken. You see? Well, I don't know what to tell you folks. It's two against two. Two against... Mr. Wiley, this isn't a popularity contest. We didn't make this up. We like the pillows. We'd like to keep them, but they smell. Why don't you keep them for a few days? Keep them? You know, it could have been the packing, something from the carton. The carton? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, you keep them out in the open air for a few days, uh, and if you still think they smell, let me know. And you'll exchange them. So you just let me know, folks. Don't worry about a thing. Laura? Well, I guess that's fair enough, and we'll just borrow some pillows in the meantime. Well, uh, we'll uh, keep them, Mr. Uh, Why don't we let you know? Thanks for coming up. That was no trouble at all. Good night, folks. Good night. It's a nice place you got here. Thank Come on, May. Oh. <laughs> Rob, I don't care.
care what he says, I smell chickens. I think I smell a rat. Mrs. Petrie, what did Mr. Wiley do or say that made you suspicious? Well, uh, Your he... Honor, I, I think since I was the one who was originally suspicious, I should answer that question. Go ahead, Mr. Preston. Thank you. <laughs> Petrie. Oh, uh, of course. Proceed. Well, what uh, first made me suspicious about him was the way he ran his business. He was very evasive about where he got the pillars, you know? He doesn't, he doesn't work out of a store. He kind of operates out of the trunk of his car. Frankly, I was a little surprised that my wife bought anything from her in the first place. Oh, well, I told you why I did, dear. He was recommended by the Parkers. I mean, there's something else I don't understand. They're new in the neighborhood. We didn't even know well, them. See, I was trying to be neighborly, and I wanted to... Will you please settle that out of court? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry, Your Honor. Anyway, we aired those pillows out for several days on the patio, and they still smell like chickens. That's only his opinion, Your Honor. Sit down, you. <laughs> your, your Honor, it isn't only my opinion. That is the point I would like to make, if it pleases the court. Anything that you do from now on that will speed up this trial will thrill the court. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Well, <clears throat> a few days later, we tried to contact Mr. Wiley on the phone he was never in. We began to think that we'd probably never see our money or him again. That evening, we had some friends over, and we were in the middle of discussing what game we had played. All right, listen, what, what about the charades or cards, huh? Oh, Rob and I played a great game last week. What was that? You know, oh, we... the game. It was a guessing game. Okay, yeah. let's play. It's, hey, that's it. We're supposed okay. to guess who called. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Mr. Wiley. Well, that's a surprise. Yeah, I'd have never guessed Wiley. What's the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been trying to get you for several days, Mr. Wiley. No, they still smell. First clue, they smell. <laughs> what? Oh, yes, we did, on the patio for three days. Second clue, it smells on the patio. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you what you can do for us. You can bring over some new ones and take the old ones back. Hey, you know this ain't a bad game once you get the hang of it? Yeah, I like it. Look, Mr. Wiley. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, I don't like to do business this way, but if you don't give us some kind of satisfaction, I'm going to have to call and stop payment on that check. Now, how do you like that? Oh, it has. <laughs> well, look, you're going to have to do something. Hello? Hello? He did something. Hey, what was that all about? What was the guy? Oh, did he hang up on you? Yes, he did. He's a crook, all right. Will you tell us what's going on? Oh. It's that Wiley guy. Wh Wait a minute, I'll show you. Who's Wiley? Yeah. Well, it's a kind of a strange story. Uh... Buddy, smell that. Is this the same game or a new one? <laughs> <laughs> well, just smell that, and then you tell me what you smell. What am I supposed to smell? Oh, don't tell him, darling. It'll influence him. Okay, then smell it and, and uh, whisper to me what you smell. Why do I always have to be the first? <laughs> because you're expendable. <laughs> Come on, buddy. You, we really need your help. Now smell it, whisper to me what you smell, and then pass it to Sally. Ah, oh, Rob, can't we each have our own pillow? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, buddy, you gotta get the other three. Buddy, would you smell it, please? Oh, no, I, I'd rather wait for my friend. <laughs> Look, oh, good. Now, Rob and I bought these pillows, and we claim that they have an odor, but the man who sold them to us says they don't. And we... Mm -hmm. You just smell them and tell us what you smell. See, it'll help us to know whether we're right or he's right. Just smell? Please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is this? Well, I hope it's not as bad as this. Let me try it. <laughs> It smells like the first one. Phew. Phew is right. Let me try yours. <laughs> what is that? Wait a minute. I got it. I got it. Uh... Right. Right? I win. Oh, I win. <laughs> and so, Your Honor, with the corroborating evidence of my friends and neighbors, we tried to get in touch with Mr. Wiley here, but in vain. You know, we finally decided why he was so cooperative the night he showed up at our house was because the check had not yet cleared. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wiley. First, I resent his dispersions on my character. Second, it's still his word against mine. He's right, you know. I was perfectly prepared for that, Your Honor. I thought you might be. <laughs> I now submit exhibits E, F, G, and H, signed by my honest friends and neighbors, attesting to the fact that they smell ducks and or chickens. Bailiff, would you present that to his Honor, please? <laughs> Still doesn't mean anything, Your Honor. They're his friends. I could get four friends that say they don't smell. 
I can get all the friends you want. Mr. Petri, these uh, uh, statements are inadmissible. They're not notarized or given under oath. Oh, well, I'm uh, I, I, sorry about that slip up, Your Honor, but I still have a, a, uh, the uh, pillows to submit in evidence. I suppose you want me to smell them. Uh, no, Your Honor. No? No? No. Uh, while we were waiting for this case to come before your honorable bench, sir, that somehow the pillow stopped smelling. Your Honor, I'd like to enter a plea of insanity. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's crazy. You do that once more and you'll be fined for contempt of court. Sorry. Mr. Petri, if the pillows have stopped smelling, you have no case and there's no reason for you being here. Well, your Honor, maybe the pillows still don't smell, but Mr. Wiley's way of doing business certainly does. You're a witness, Your Honor. I may take him to court. Quiet. <laughs> Mr. Petrie, uh, I'm afraid you have no case unless you have something more substantial as evidence. Well, uh, <clears throat> Your Honor, would, would the introduction of an ind indication of misrepresentation be a substantiation? <laughs> of what? Well, I'm, of my, uh, my case. Well, if you can prove misrepresentation, it may. May what? <laughs> what you said before. <laughs> Oh, 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 thank you, Honor. That's wonderful. I now submit, Your Honor, my most damaging piece of evidence, Exhibit I. <laughs> Mr. Petri, is it your intention to run through the entire alphabet? <laughs> no, sir. I is the last. For me. I don't know what letters he intends using. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> that, Your Honor, is a sworn statement by an independent testing laboratory, one you've seen on many television commercials, I'm sure, stating that... The pillows which were represented by Mr. Wiley, the defendant, as being 100% Eiderdown, are in actuality 12% Eiderdown and 88% chopped chicken feathers. I object, Your Honor. Quiet! <laughs> chopped chicken feathers? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Cheap chopped chicken feathers. <laughs> I rest my case. But it also says on there that they were improperly processed, which means they pressed what caused the smell. I can read, Mr. Petrie. Well, I, mean, I know that. I thought maybe the audience, the spectator, I thought maybe they'd like to hear. You know, whatever. <clears throat> I would now like to present in evidence, sir, exhibit or pillow B. Well, I, I, I don't really think that would be necessary. If uh, the facts contained in this statement are accurate, uh, it, uh, it should be enough. They are accurate, Your Honor, absolutely. And once you see this, this is the very pillow, you will realize I... that it's obviously not eider down, but simply cheap chop chicken feathers. I told you not to bring that up here. Uh, are, you, are you allergic to chicken feathers? Yes, I'm. That's further proof. <laughs> I told you, he's nuts. The court decides in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $80. <laughs> I would like to thank the court for its, for its honest and sincere... Mr. Petri, court is adjourned. I should have been a doctor. I true. And when you wash these, don't forget to set the machine at delicate warm only. No, I won't. Uh, Mrs. Petri, may you and your husband spend many happy years under those blankets. Well, thank you very much. Goodbye, Mrs. Petri. Bye. Hello, Mr. Petri. Hello. Bye. Wasn't that my defendant? Uh, yes, uh, that was he. What was, what, what are those? Uh, blankets. I can see that. Where'd they come from? Uh, sheep. Mostly. Honey, you bought those blankets from that man. Rob, please. It took all of my legal still to bring that man to justice and you're dealing with him. Rob, listen. The man came here. He was practically in tears. He just, he begged me and pleaded to be forgiven. Look, you're the one who's always said that criminals can be rehabilitated and should be given a second chance. What was the discount? 50% cheaper than the discount stores. But that wasn't the reason, darling. I did it because I felt sorry for him. Mm-hmm. What if those are faulty? There's no problem. None whatsoever. He gave us a guarantee. What kind of a guarantee? He said that if anything goes wrong with these blankets, that you can always take him to court and beat him again. 